Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week you can see I'm going to be looking at Perplexity. It's an AI tool that I've been using for a while, but it looks like there's some new functionality. So if you're interested in, in exploring Perplexity AI with me, then please keep on watching. Okay, so Perplexity, the, the one good thing I think about Perplexity is that when you actually do a search or ask a question, uh, it will give you links to the references so that you can actually fact check it. Now we know that large language models still have a tendency to hallucinate, but if we can cross check with a link for each of the bullet points and ideas that Perplexity shares with us, then that makes things a little bit easier for us. So let me just move myself out of the way. This is the home page. So they have a free and a pro version and you can see there's home, discover, spaces and library. So first of all, I'm just going to go to my library of my conversations and show you what I was asking perplexity. Okay, so the first thing is, let's just go there. I wanted to know, is Perplexity AI tool Spaces? Is it like Notebook LM Folder? Because I've been using Notebook LM Folder. It's a great way to house a lot of documents, sources, websites, and even documents in your Google Drive and analyze them within that housed space. And I thought, well, Perplexity, what's the difference in Spaces? So I asked Perplexity, is it like Notebook LM? And let's have a look at the answer. So Perplexity is really designed for collaborative projects. And that's what I found out was the difference and the beauty. So it emphasizes teamwork, efficiency in managing AI driven tasks. And I'm going to show you a space that I've created in a moment. It allows users to work together on various AI projects, facilitating communication, collaboration among team members. And you can see there's a little icon here. It looks like it's a video. If I press on it, it will direct me to a video and then I can just cross check that. Now, Notebook LM, I've already made videos on that. So we know that we can upload any kind of document and it's in a nice organized folder. But what's the difference between Perplexity Spaces and also the notebook? So I love how Perplexity has given me this table to compare. So Perplexity AI, the spaces is really for collaborative AI projects, less emphasis on source management. There's various collaborative formats. It's focused on teamwork and there's a user base is more team oriented. Whereas Notebook LM is really about individual note taking and research. So I recommend if you're doing any kind of postgrad or you have to do research in terms of an extended essay, if you're a student or if you're a teacher, you're doing your master's or your doctorate or PhD, Notebook LM is a great way to be able to analyze research and, and put all your research in a folder and then using Sotoro to create your bibliography, right? Okay, so Notebook LM also organizes sources into notebooks. Um, it's seamless across Google Docs, PDFs, text files, as well as web sources. So it actually doesn't say videos, web sources and URL uh, and different URLs that you can put in. Uh, interactivity, it summarizes in, in terms of questions and answers, that's correct, and it's more individually based. So then um, I scrolled down and I wanted to know a little bit more about Perplexity Spaces, like how I would use this, and then I had a little play around. So Spaces is designed to enhance collaboration and streamline research processes. So we can integrate our own personal files. We can upload up to 50 files in one space, allowing the AI to utilize both web sources as well as the documents. Uh, the collaboration allows you, you to invite up, up to 10 collaborators, allowing them to contribute by creating new threads or asking questions within that space. And this is particularly useful, of course, for team projects and group studies. Um, now it says custom AI models. So depending on your subscription, you can choose from various uh, AI models. And then I wanted to know what large language models Perplexity were using. So I asked that question a little bit later, but we can actually set custom instructions for how the AI should respond. I'll show you that a little bit later too. And it organizes research so we can organize the threads. And, you know, that's something that I think was lacking in normal large language models. Like I use Poe and that houses a lot of large language models, but I can't really organize my conversations very well. I can copy and paste them, but to have the folders like Notebook LM or to have a perplexity space, it just allows me to be able to organize the research or if I'm collaborating, organize those conversations a little bit better. Okay, 
So um, it's got some benefits. So I wanted to know what large language model actually powers perplexity. And it said that it uses GPT-4, Claude 3.5, and its own in-house LMM. So I would cross-check that. Let me just have a look here. Finding reliable information. Okay, so there's some blog articles here. Wikipedia, yep, it actually says it uses, um, it actually uses its own. I want to click on that actually, and let's just have a look. So it's a search engine, uses large language models, so it doesn't actually say which one, but here we go. Uh, freemium model, standalone, the paid version has access to, there we go, GPT-4, Claude 3.5, Grok 2, Llama 3, so quite a lot, so quite a really good selection. Okay, let's go back to my perplexity. And of course, there's an um, app for it. I just already have an app for Poe, so I'm just keeping that there. And I'm actually using perplexity more as a on my web browser as a search engine because I can cross-check the information. So instead of going into Google, I actually go into perplexity, ask a question, and then cross-check that information like you would with any Google search. So when we actually, you know, search anything on Google, we'd always be verifying the facts and the truth and whether that is legitimate information or not. Okay, so um, before we go into spaces, I wanted to quickly show you Discover. I just saw this tab. Discover is where we can actually identify the areas that we want to learn about. It's all the news articles from the internet. And so you can see I've chosen tech and science, but you can choose finance, art and culture. I've chosen to focus on tech and science because I'm really interested in the latest news in terms of AI. And as we know, it's changing so rapidly, so quickly that there's new tools, there's new developments, you know, every single week and every couple of days. So it's really nice for me just to come in to discover and I can just choose to read whichever article. It's collected all of the articles based on tech and science for me. Okay, so let's go into spaces. And to save some time, I have uploaded and created a space. Here are some examples of ones from Perplexity. So they have the Art of War, Brainstorm, uh, Questions to Court. So I've uh, created a space on AI ethics. I think it's really important that we focus on ethical use of AI and we teach our students and we adopt AI ethically and thoughtfully. So I'm just going to click on that. And you can see I've actually uploaded some of the documents from around the world, different organizations and bodies, including OECD, the European Union, the US Department of Education. And then now I can actually interact with these different documents in a collaborative way. So before, um, when we we're reading about how Spaces works, it said that you can actually edit instructions on how you want it to communicate. So here, if I click on here, I've got, I've titled AI Ethics. Now, this AI prompt in terms of tone, I didn't put this in. It said always respond in a formal tone and prioritize data-driven insights. So I can actually change that to any kind of tone or using any kind of details in terms of the prompting. Privacy, I can make it shareable or I can keep it secret at the moment. And because I'm not on the pro version at the moment, I can't choose the AI model that it uses. But in the free version, I can upload up to five different files for free. And then what I really like is here in the corner, I can actually share onto different social media, share on my WhatsApp, copy the link. And this is, I think, the value of this tool. It really is about promoting collaboration in teamwork in, in a space, literally, that has all of the research, it has websites, it's got all the sources, and then we can have some really data-informed, factual conversations around any researched areas or any projects if your students are using this. Okay, and I can see in my free version that I've got three searches left today, so get more pro searches. So, um, you know, this is a tool that I may consider subscribing to. I try not to subscribe to too many tools. I believe that less is more, and I think it's important not to rely on any particular tool 100%, because as we know, sometimes some AI tools have a certain shelf life, like look what happened to Google Jamboard. And so I think really carefully about what I do subscribe to. I subscribe to Padlet, and I have done, I think, since 2010, when it used to be called Wallwisher. I subscribe to Poe so that I have access to lots of language models 
models, as well as text to image, as well as text to video tools. And then of course Canva, but Canva Pro is actually free for educators. So teachers don't need to subscribe to that. And that's about it. So this may be the next AI tool that I might subscribe to because I'm using it like a Google search. It gives me the links so that I can verify the information and the output that the large language model gives me. And in the pro version, I'm gonna have access and be able to choose a better large language model, perhaps that is used in the free version. Okay, so that's Perplexity AI and the Discover tab, the Spaces tab. I'm pretty excited about this tool and it's a really good tool I think to use if you're doing any kind of search because you can actually then verify the information with the link that's provided. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.